Okay, so I'm going to read Percy Jackson, just in case you, you, you didn't read or for whatever reason. I'm going to read it from where we stopped in class last term. Okay, so they were on the bus and they saw the, old, the three old lady, ladies and the lady cut the yarn. And then Grover said it, it's not good. He, he had a bad vibe and then he said he must please let him walk him to the uh, to home from the train station or the bus station and then he just left but it was fine because then he arrived and he um, I just want to find the page and he, he went home and everything was fine and his stepdad was there with his poker buddies and then his mom said they're going on vacation um, Office. Let me just find it. I should have done this before. Okay. Um, an hour later, we were ready to leave. Gabe took a break from his poker game long enough to watch me lug my mom's bags to the car. He kept griping and groaning about losing her cooking, and more important, his 78 Camaro for the whole weekend. Not a scratch on this car, brain boy, he warned me as I loaded the last bag. Not one little scratch. Like I'd be the one driving. I was 12. But that didn't matter to Gabe. If a seagull so much as pooped on his paint job, he'd find a way to blame me. Watching him lumber back towards the apartment building, I got so mad. I did something I can't explain. As Gabe reached the doorway, I made the hand gesture. I'd seen Grover make on the bus a sort of warding off evil gesture, a clawed hand over my heart, then a showing movement towards Gabe. The screen door slammed shut so hard it whacked him in the butt and sent him flying up the staircase as if he'd been shot from a cannon. Maybe it was just the wind or some freak accident with the hinges, but I didn't stay long enough to find out. I got in the Camaro and told my mom to step on it. Our rental cabin was on the south shore, way out at the tip of Long Island. It was a little pastel box with faded curtains half sunken into the dunes. There was always sand in the sheets and spiders in the cabinets and most of the time the sea was too cold to swim in. I loved the place. We'd been going there since I was a baby. My mom had been going even longer. She never exactly said, but I knew White Beach was special to her. It was the place where she'd met my dad. As we got closer to Montauk, she seemed to grow younger, years of worry and work disappearing from her eyes. Her eyes turned the colour of the sea. We got there at sunset, opened all the cabin's windows and went through our usual cleaning routine. We walked on the beach, fed blue corn chips to the seagulls and munched on blue jelly beans, blue saltwater taffy and all the other free samples my mom had brought from work. I guess I should explain the blue food. See, Gabe had once told my mom there was no such thing. They had this fight, which seemed like a really small thing at the time, but ever since, my mom went out of her way to eat blue. She baked blue birthday cakes, she mixed blueberry smoothies, she bought blue corn tortilla, tortilla chips and brought home blue candy from the shop. This, along with keeping her maiden name Jackson, rather than calling herself Mrs. Agliano, was proof that she wasn't totally suckered by Gabe. She did have a rebellious streak, like me. When it got dark, we made a fire. We roasted hot dogs and marshmallows. Mom told me stories about when she was a kid, back before her parents died in the plane crash. She told me about the book she wanted to write someday, when she had enough money to quit the candy shop. Eventually, I got up the nerve to ask about what was always on my mind whenever we came to Montauk. My father. Mom's eyes went all misty. I figured she would tell me the same things she always did, but I never got tired of hearing them. He was kind, Percy, she said, tall, handsome and powerful, but gentle too. You have his black hair, you know, and his green eyes. 
Mum fished a blue jelly bean out of her candy bag. I wish I could see you, Percy. He would be so proud. I wondered how she could say that. What was so great about me? A dyslexic, hyperactive boy with a D-plus report card, kicked out of school for the sixth time in six years. How old was I? I asked. I mean, when he left? She watched the flames. He was only with me for one summer, Percy. Right here, at this beach, this cabin. But he knew me as a baby. No, honey, he knew I was expecting a baby, but he never saw you. He had to leave before you were born. I tried to square that with the fact that I seemed to remember something about my father. A warm glow, a smile. I had always assumed I knew me, he knew me as a baby. My mum never said it outright, but still, I felt it must be true. Now, to be told that he'd never even seen me? I felt angry at my father. Maybe it was stupid, but I resented him for going on that ocean voyage, for not having the guts to mar marry my mom. He'd left us, and now we were stuck with smelly Gabe. Are you going to send me away again? I asked her. To another boarding school? She pulled a marshmallow from the fire. I don't know, honey. Her voice was heavy. I, I, think, I think we'll have to do something. Because you don't want me around? I regretted the words as soon as they were out. My mom's eyes welled with tears. She took my hand, squeezed it tight. Oh, Percy, no. I, I have to, honey. For your own good, I have to send you away. Her words reminded me of what Mr. Bruner had said, that it was best for me to leave Yancey. Because I'm not normal, I said. You say that as if it's a bad thing, Percy, but you don't realize how important you are. I thought Yancey Academy would be far enough away. I thought you'd finally be safe. Safe from what? She met my eyes, and a flood of memories came back to me. All the weird, scary things that had, happened, had ever happened to me, some of which I tried to forget. During third grade, a man in a black trench coat had stalked me on the playground. When the teachers threatened to call the police, he went away growling. But no one believed me when I told them that under his broad-brimmed hat, the man only had one eye, right in the middle of his head. Before that, a really early memory. I was in preschool, and a teacher accidentally put me down for a nap in a cot that a snake had slithered into.